Hi guys, welcome to Giant Med. My name is Hazal. And my name is Liddy and today's video is about the UCAT. So the UCAT is an admissions test that many medical schools use for entry to their medicine programs, which can be dentistry or medicine. It consists of five sections, verbal reasoning, which is our favourite, yeah. <laughs> quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, decision making and, and situational judgement. So the first four sections are scored from 300 to 900, 300 being the worst and 900 being the best. And then the last section, which is the situational judgement test, is scored from band one to band four, band one being the best, band four being the worst. So overall your score will be out of 3,600 um, for the first four sections, as well as your score for the situational judgement test. What is just allow you to really stand out from the crowd because yeah. medicine is a competitive subject so in a way it does allow some medical schools to really narrow down people that they'd like to invite for interview. The UCAT is actually the same as the UK CAT which is what I sat last year. I was able to get a score which was in the top 2% um, of the cohort who sat last year and for this reason I feel like we can, we can give you the advice needed to make sure that you can score, um, you can get a score that is really good which can help you stand out from everyone else applying. Know where to sit that you can. Yes, yeah, so they do actually give you quite a wide range in which you can take it. And if you're taking it in 2019 for entry to university in 2020, um, it will mean that you have to take it between 1st of July to 2nd of October. Yeah, so there is a fee that you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. If you do take the test between the 1st of July to the 31st of August, the price is £65. However, if you do take it from the 1st of September to the 2nd of October, which is the last date that you can sit the UCAT, mm -hmm. it is £87. Pounds. Yeah, and make sure you do book your test in advance and you do sit it um, in the range that they give you because if um, you don't then you have to wait a whole nother year to do it. So we personally sat the UCAT, um, well for us was UKCAT, at the end of August just because yeah. we felt like we just finished mocks in July mm -hmm. so it allowed us with plenty of time to prepare for the UCAT. So I would say our mocks ended like mid-July. Yeah mid-July. Yeah. So we had from mid-July to end of August so about like five six weeks to properly prepare. You need to make sure to organise your time well because <laughs> Predictions that you will get from these mock exams you sit in year 12 are just as important as the UCAT score that you will receive. So it's really important to organise your time in a way where you finish mocks and then you're able to do UCAT. Mm -hmm. However, we do understand if you're good at um, multitasking and your time management yeah. skills you want to start earlier, it's completely yeah. up to you. But I just think just make sure that um, if you start both at the, if you start preparing for both of them at the same time, mm -hmm. that you're not going to inhibit yourself from doing well in your mocks, for example. Yeah. So yeah, just plan your time. Um, well, is it? Yeah. There are a lot of resources. So many, lots of paid ones, lots of free ones, also. But our personal favourite, Medify. Medify. Guys, get literally Medify. Our savior. You will not regret it. Medify. At all. Definitely. So Medify is um, an online like course website where you can. Um, practice the test and because the test you'll take, the actual UCAT is also online on a computer, doing med or buying Medify and using it on a computer really prepares you well for the exam. Definitely. So it's available from um, for different time ranges, so from one week up to seven months and the mm -hmm. price ranges from £30 to £70. Yeah. Now that might sound like a lot but I promise you it's worth it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just need to remember at the end of the day you are making an investment into yeah. your future you're investing into how well you want to do and you have mm -hmm. to be sometimes you know you do have to be willing to spend a little yeah. in order to maximize the score you get however we do understand that they are free resources that are just as good mm -hmm. um, we personally bought the two months package if yeah. we only prepared for six weeks because so I don't think there's months, an option yeah. yeah for six weeks yeah. But yeah. So I think two months was um, buying a two month package was plenty of time. Definitely. If you feel like you want to start preparing a bit earlier, mm. there are three months and like I said, up to seven months. Yeah. I personally think starting seven months before might be a bit um, like overkill, like you might over um, overwhelm yourself. So just be careful when um, buying the packages. And also, uh, with the prices, there are bursaries available. One thing I really did like about Medify is the fact that you can add the date of your UCAT exam and yeah. then it will provide you with questions according to how long left you have onto your UCAT. There were a lot of mini sections to help you practice individual parts. At the time, my worst was quantitative reasoning and abstract reasoning. <laughs> and so verbal reasoning. Oh gosh. <laughs> so it was really useful to have this mini sections to really yeah. target what you're struggling in the most and what you need to spend the most time in. As well as that, they have full mocks. So I think at the time we were doing it, they had eight mocks. Yeah. And that's the full two hour test um, in time conditions. And that really does prepare you. 
practice makes perfect. Literally. <laughs> do as many questions as you can yeah. guys don't just limit yourself to medify it is great mm -hmm. however i also did use questions from medic portal yeah. and the uk cat website in itself had yeah. really useful questions yeah, um, on the uk cat website there was a question bank so yet again lots of like hundreds of questions if not thousands that you could use to prepare as well as um mocks there were also mocks on the uk cat website yeah. but disclaimer when we did it the uk cat mocks were a lot harder on the website than the yeah. real thing yeah and also the book yeah. so the isc book, book. So I know it says UK cap, but of course, as you know, they're both the exact same thing with yeah. different names, so you can definitely use them. So there's a 600 question one, and there's also a 1,250 one. Yeah. And I think this book was really good just for practice. However, um, as the test you take is on a computer, and this is like just like questions in a book, it's not as representative, but it's still good because at the end of the day, questions are questions, and it is going to help also, you. So. I bought a detachable keyboard. She thinks I was extra for this, but because um, when you do the test, you're gonna have a keyboard computer. like this. Because in a test, you can have a calculator, but you can't bring in your own calculator. Yeah. You have to use the one on screen. So like on screen calculators are really bad. However, you can use this little like section of the keyboard. And I had a laptop and um, that didn't have that. So I was like, right, I'm gonna buy this. And it really does help because in a test you are under time conditions and mm -hmm. literally every second matters so if you're comfortable like using this section of the keyboard like to quickly plot in numbers and stuff like that mm -hmm. it does really help there are shortcuts that you can use on the keyboard for example go to next question go to previous question um bring up the calculator or take away the calculator stuff like that seem like silly but they are so important in the test and it helps you save time i know two hours might seem like a long time but it is not a long, it time. Is not a long time but you know you don't have to buy you don't the have to, i did but it guys I, mean... I used a laptop However, I did find it useful to go to my local library mm -hmm. to yeah. use it in the computer setting in a quiet setting with headphones on yeah. just to replicate the actual day. But yeah, I think, you know, if you can invest in it, I think it really helps. So there are a lot of resources and it's very easy to feel overwhelmed, mm -hmm. especially when you look over and you can see someone else Nicole got doing the absolute most <laughs> for preparation but don't fret it's okay you don't have to finish all of the questions in the world it's not going to be possible mm -hmm. if you are using Medify I would suggest prioritizing the mini mocks and the mocks just mm -hmm. because it's better to practice with all the five sections together rather than yeah. to practice individually just because that's more realistic of what you're going to have in the day yeah but i would say leave the mocks and the mini mocks um till like we left it like 10 days before our test yeah so in the last 10 days that's all we did literally like just yeah. mocks and mini mocks and before that so the period before that from when we started um preparing to 10 days before yeah. and I realised if I want to get through as many of these as possible, I need to do at least um, a certain number of um, questions every single day. So I worked out like how many questions there are and how many days I have left. And then I worked out how many questions I have to do from each section every day. And although I think I ended up doing like 60 or 70 questions a day, and that might seem like a lot, but it's better than letting it build up and having to do like 200, 300 questions mm. a day. And like I said, with regular practice, it does mean that it does get easier and you get better with timing and just understanding Like you find trends in questions and it's easier to spot it and answer it quickly. So I would definitely recommend doing a certain number of questions every single day. Take situational judgment tests seriously. You yeah, might not definitely. think it's that serious because you don't necessarily get a score between 300 and 900. However, mm -hmm. it's just as important. And I would definitely say for situational judgment tests, the ISC book was really useful for it. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. As well as Medify as well. And it's what helped us get band one yeah. for situational judgment tests. It was really good. And a lot of people might think that situational judgment test is just common sense, but yeah. it really <coughs> isn't. This for each question in the situational judgment test, you get given a scenario for example a patient walks into a hospital and asks for records of their relative yeah. and they'll give you four different options in which you can think um you can pick well you have to rank them from uh, most appropriate thing to do to least appropriate thing to do and the more practice you do and the more um different types of questions you see you'll see what the right answer is and what they're looking for so it'll just make it a lot easier so just make sure you do a lot of practice a lot of medical schools will not actually interview um applicants if they've scored band three or band four so it is very important even though you're not doctors yet and you're going to learn throughout university mm -hmm. they kind of want to make sure i guess that you have that basics and the foundation for having like more practice yeah, yeah. Um, 
even though you are given a calculator in the test, it is really important that you can kind of use your mental math skills also because yeah. using a calculator, as you'll know, like, it takes up a lot of time. Make sure that you are only using the calculator when you need to. And for this, I would say your math skills are really important. Yeah, because you won't have time to genuinely work no. out every single question yeah. you answer to reasoning. There's just not enough time. And because each question is worth, worth the same number of marks, yeah. it's not worth spending longer on a question when you know realistically you're going to need a lot more time to work it out. Yeah, and you don't even necessarily need to study maths A level or be amazing at maths to do one point six with reasoning. And with a lot of practice, I was actually able to get 860 out of 900. So just make sure you prioritise the questions you want to suggest improving those mental math skills mm -hmm. just by doing a few questions here and there that you can find online. It doesn't yeah. have to be anything like too big, like yeah. algebra level, nothing like that. So, um, also suggest remembering acronyms for certain things. Mm -hmm. One that we, that was really useful for us was um, for abstract reasoning, SCANS, mm -hmm. S-C-A-N-S-S-S. -S -S. So that's um, symmetry, colour, angle, number, size, sides and, and shape. shape. <laughs> yeah, so um, you may think like, what is this used for? So for anyone that doesn't know, abstract reasoning is basically, they'll put a few shapes um, on like the screen and you have to pick the next one that fits the pattern. When you walk in they give you um, a whiteboard actually in the exam mm. so for that um, section I just remember writing down scans on my yeah, so whiteboard quickly it, yeah. and if I was stuck on a question I'll be like oh Definitely. let me just quickly look back and then pick one and hopefully it matches and then um, yeah you can get the right answer because abstract reasoning is really weird like it's something yeah. you've never really come across before yeah. and some of the questions you're just like i can't see a trend at all like mm. it's really really weird so with more practice you will get better at it and just using acronyms from the very start it will mean that you're um, so used to looking back at your back at your acronym that when you're doing it in the real thing it'll just uh, be off of like memory and stuff like that yeah, yeah. and yeah just make sure you practice as much as you can because i was able to get 890 out of 900 in the real thing and i still don't know how i did that because <laughs> in my box i was getting like 600 so it does show that practice does really help Prepare for your test the day before, of course. Pack your form of identification into mm -hmm. your bag because they will need to see it. That could be a pass. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say remember to bring a water bottle as well to keep freshly hydrated, Definitely. especially this season, which is quite hot. And yeah, make sure you arrive 15 minutes earlier because they do need to give you a set of rules that you need to read and you also have to sign a document. So yeah, make sure you get there in enough time so that you're not overwhelmed or you don't miss your test. Yeah. So you walk into a room with like section of areas with um, a computer in each one and they'll tell you which one to sit at. Yeah. And from there you just follow the instructions on the screen and the test is two hours like we said so and once you walk out they'll give you a result straight away so it's not like a levels yeah, they have to wait months absolutely. and months yeah. they usually walk out and they give they hand you a letter with your name on it and then when you open it up you'll see your score it's quite like weird because you've never had that before and yeah. like, you never get your result right away yeah. so it's I guess it's good session. and bad because you get your results immediately however yeah. at the same time you're with other people that have just done it yeah it's quite it's yeah. quite hectic and of course that brings us next to our next point of self-motivation you just need to remember that at the end of the day you've done your preparation you've done your planning you mm -hmm. have you are ready to sit the test and you are good enough to get a good score yeah, so you definitely. just need to make sure that you have that faith in yourself and that you don't get nervous it is quite difficult but yeah. try not to get nervous like, yeah make day. sure I would suggest not to do questions on a day like just before you go in yeah because that can really stress you out and you don't need that just before an exam um, before a test well. or, but yeah just make sure you do walk in feeling prepared yeah. and if like a week before you feel like you just can't do it you can actually change well, it let's do on august the 20th and i did for ready so i changed it to august the 21st yeah, i would say definitely for my uk cat the nerves definitely got the mm -hmm. best of me and i did i didn't necessarily perform to the best of my ability even though last year the average was 647.5 mm -hmm. i got 667.5 which to me i wanted to really reach the 700 yeah. so i thought i was going to receive any offers any interview offers but luckily i still got all four of my offers yeah. so just remember that at the end of the day that doesn't mean you won't get into medicine yeah, definitely. you don't know how the percentiles are going to be yet so just keep your head up high and don't allow it to inhibit your application process um, thank you for thank watching you much for our watching. video we hope that it was really useful yeah and like we said in the last video if you do have any questions or any more questions that we didn't get to um, answer in this video make sure you leave a comment down below or dm us on instagram and yeah make sure you subscribe <laughs>